Welcome to Bill Brunch, a daily morning show. We talk about the latest topics in entertainment. I'm Lucas Tim. I'm Allie Colbert. I'm Shannon Coffey. I'm Asia Celestino. Hi, Hi everyone. Woo! Filling in for Brittany Joan Cooper. Today we're going to talk about Hasbro's new Monopoly game, which has millennials reacting in the most millennial way ever, and Disney's highly anticipated live action trailer about a little elephant with not so little ears. Plus, tarot card reader Sammy Main stops by to talk about her new book and perform live card readings. And documentary filmmaker Glenn Zipper joined the table to discuss their Netflix docuseries, Dogs. But first... But first... Asia's here. Asia's here. Welcome. Brit Thank you for having me. I'm Thank so excited you. to be back. Thank yes, you. I'm happy to have you back. Brittany needed a much-needed vacations in Brazil, panning <laughs> it up. She's yeah. like, I'm getting away from this now. Yeah, we camp. drove her insane, <laughs> and she needed to get some rehab and leave us. Yeah. <laughs> but we're very happy to have you. Yes, thank you for having me. Well, she's beauty and she's grace. She's Jennifer Aniston. The A-list actress is all set to play a pageant queen in Netflix's new musical comedy, Dumplin'. The film, which premieres December 7th, will focus on what happens when Aniston's plus-sized daughter decides to compete in her mother's pageant, leading others to follow in her footsteps. Let's take a look. What a way this must be your daughter. That's my daughter's best friend. This is my daughter, Willa Dean. Wow. Okay. And that's when I decided enough was enough. I know that look. What's going on? I think I'm going to sign up for the pageant. Uh, 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 it's going to be like a protest in heels. Uh, uh, Willa Dean Opal. Hey, y'all. If you're signing up, I am too. What? No, I'm not the Jonah Ark of Fat Girls. <laughs> be so much fun. Totally fun. Pageants are harder than you think. I'm Rosie Dixon's daughter. It runs in my blood. <laughs> really I'm so good. excited for this. Look yeah. at Rachel Green making a movie. <laughs> <laughs> you, still, you still see her as Rachel. I just, she always will be Jennifer Aniston to me. Like, she's not. Oh, well, she's Jennifer Aniston. She's just. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> she's, I, just I get it. it. I get it. She's just like lovable and like not doing any dramatic work. Right. You know well, what I mean? I do think this is like the perfect role for her. Like, she's kind of found her sweet spot with her recent roles. It's like, this is a very. She's good at like, either like the. Sn snarky, sassy, funny, like, you know, she's that Apple show, the t talk show coming out, the morning talk she's doing with Reese Witherspoon, oh, and then I she has that. this, which is, I think she, like, looks great as, like, a mo overbearing mother, beauty pageant mother. I think I just love Jennifer Anderson, and this movie itself seems really heartfelt and, like, f fun. I can't wait. I'm, gonna, I'm excited to watch it. I'm excited to watch it, too. Yeah, I think, um, I got really excited when I saw an article about it because I thought Honey Boo Boo was in it for a second. <laughs> and I keep on having these flashes thinking that Honey Boo Boo is definitely going to be an Oscar award winning actress. I don't know why it's something that's There's like still hidden time. Me. There is, right? Yeah. She's only 13 and I just think uh. she's going to surprise us all. But sadly, she wasn't cast in this film. Where so is not yet. she now? She's on Dancing with the Stars. She Genius, really, yeah. yeah. Oh, and then her, she, she's considered one of the stars. Yeah. Yes, she's and revitalizing her career. She's a bigger star career. than all of us put together. Yeah. Oh. I know. Yeah. No, unfortunately, she's the one who she jiggled her belly and was like, "I'm pregnant." Yeah. yeah. And Sketty, and then and then she also declared everybody's a little bit gay before gay marriage is legalized. And I'm not Woo! saying she was responsible for that, but that was an iconic moment. Wait, yeah. stop it! How come last time I was here we talked about we did exact thing? Yeah. 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 I just bring the honey every boo -boo. show. Yeah. yeah. I bring Honey Boo Boo energy or something. Yeah, you do. I think so you remind me of Honey Boo Boo. That's why I did that. <laughs> well, it, didn't star. Honey Boo Boo have weird stuff with her mom? Her mom was like there was a lot a of drama. Oh god. Well, her mom. Her mom's a lot on the show drama. too. The her mom is what? lost all the. She lost the weight from hot to not not yeah. the hot. Whatever. Mama June. I thought you were gonna say her mom lost the weight. She did. She, did. she, did. she, she did. lost Jessica. the weight. Her mom lost all the weight. She had yeah. a yeah. for yeah. Where have you years? been? That is a yeah. ton of weight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good for her. Mama June. That's like 600 pounds. Well, either way, <laughs> she, was, she was good either way before she was. I love Mama June being Mama not, June. I mean, we don't, you don't have to defend her. She's not, no. Her people aren't coming for us. I do love Mama June. They though. might. They will <laughs> I mean, now. Good but, segue, because this is about body image. Yeah. yeah. And accepting yourself yeah. for your beauty on the inside and your character and all that stuff. Yeah, and the actress who plays Dumplin', I'm sorry I'm blanking on her name, she's a really good actress, and she's kind of on the rise. So I'm Is excited it Danielle McDonald? Yes, I'm excited to see her. Yep, there the you poster. go, on the poster, Danielle <laughs> McDonald. I'm excited to see her rise, and be also having Netflix behind her. Like, I love Netflix is kind of moving to, the, to um, movies, and this is going to be available in select theaters, but mostly on Netflix, and why you just wouldn't watch it on Netflix, I don't know. But it's going to be December 7th, which... Yeah. Like, you stay at home, you know, Friday night. So fun. Netflix them. original films. Did anyone see Tallulah with Ellen Page? 
Yes. I feel like I've watched, like, I've just been spending all my time watching all these Netflix movies. And I keep right. on making everybody watch The Kissing Booth. <laughs> <laughs> and it's you didn't the make funnest me watch movie. it. Really? Yeah. Oh, weird. <laughs> I, I made you watch it, right? No. Just say yes. Okay, oh. yes. <laughs> I did so many times. times. Hold the knife to you. Um, no, yeah, I made it. so many people watch that movie. That and uh, To All the Boys I've Loved Before. I like, yeah. I like oh, that Set It Up was so good, too. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're killing it. Good. Yeah. Yeah. The rom-com game. Yeah. I haven't seen Set It Up either. I have to watch it. I haven't seen it. I mean, I think it's really interesting that pageants seem to be cropping up in all of these digital productions. I know right. this weekend there's one with uh, um, Facebook Watch, right. Queen America coming out. And it's, it's weird because if you think about it, pageants in the U.S. have been kind of on the decline for viewership and ratings for like the past few years. Right. So I think everyone kind of wants a little bit of the like fun and the nostalgia, but like giving mm -hmm. it a new twist. Updating yeah. it, yeah. Giving it a 2018 update for a sure. A revamp. Yeah. They definitely make great movies. Like Miss Congeniality is one of my favorite oh. films. I feel like Drop Dead Gorgeous is really funny. Kristen Dunst. Yeah. Oh right. Miss Congeniality. Oh my God. Though. Yeah. When they were like putting poison in the yeah. crowns or something. Oh. Little I Miss Sunshine. Yeah. Little Miss Sunshine, the classic. Great movie. So yeah, good. but it's crazy because the real thing is such a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. I think the real thing is probably even more interesting than the movies because everything I've heard is people play really dirty backstage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're like, I put razor blades in her bra, and you're like, oh no, that person lost their titties. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Jesus. Rest in peace. Yeah, and they're horrible. I was actually just watching the episode of Friends where Rachel signs her baby up for baby pageants. Oh. Which is weird. Some babies can be sexy, others not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's weird when they put a little baby that's clearly not sexy in a sexy position, and it's just like, Bleh. Yeah. And you're like, oh. Aww. Or like you see on Instagram, those people that get backlash for putting their babies in like tube tops or bikinis because they're like too mature. But I'm like, baby looks cute. I kind of yeah. like the outfit. Yeah, yeah I see the, the issue yeah. there. Would I you? mean, I wouldn't put <laughs> makeup on my baby because, you know, there are years and years to wear makeup and be, you know, contributing to the beauty industry. Yeah. But mm. I don't know. The outfits are kind of cute. I wouldn't like... Photoshop your baby. I think that's a problem. Yeah, no, don't Photoshop your baby. A lot of people Photoshop <laughs> their babies. I think it's pretty funny. Remember when they used to, like, they started making, like, denim diapers for babies? And they try to, like, make them look like little adults. And you're like, yeah, but are they going to get jobs and pay rent? Like, that's the real question, <laughs> yeah. you know? Like, if they get to wear makeup and they get to wear little denim diapers, then they should wipe their own asses, too. <laughs> yeah. I completely agree. That's a lot agree. to ask yeah. for a baby. Like, if you're, in, if you're in mascara, pay taxes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, you know, if you have a full face beat, then, like, you definitely got to contribute to society. I mean, that's 100% yeah. That's the trade-off. Yes. I mean, I think just like any other person who works in the industry from a young age, I always just worry that it's like too much too soon, especially with pageants and you see them. You just you know, advocated putting your baby in a bathing suit. In a bathing suit, yeah, <laughs> like a cute little outfit or like an homage to a celebrity or something like that. But yeah, I don't know. I just I feel like it's too much too soon. It's, it's for like the pageant issue. culture. Right. Yeah. All right, moving on, guys. Everyone stop and don't pass go because there's a new game for the young people in town, Millennial Monopoly. The Hasbro board game features the tagline, forget real estate, you can't afford it anyway in this version of Monopoly. Players don't win money or buy homes or railroads, but instead players collect experience points to earn rewards such as three-day music festivals or going to a vegan bistro. Yeah. Thank you, baby boomers, for creating this. Yeah. This you can is see... such a product of baby boomers. I think it's funny, but it's just like, okay, well, you fucked up the economy and the political scene so much that, like, yeah, we can't afford to make a living wage. Thank you. I feel attacked because, uh, what's the name? Rich Uncle Pennybags over there wearing all the millennial stereotypical things. The, you do? What feel... is that? Participation medal uh... and coffee. Like, not just millennials drink coffee or wear earbuds. Like, yeah, I, not feel offended. I, I feel slightly offended. It seems like such a cheap shot. I feel like it's really lazy humor to, for them to be like, they like coffee and <laughs> avocado toast. It's like, it's just food, idiots. We're yeah. required to eat food <laughs> to survive. Like, baby boomers are so stupid sometimes. I feel like if we did a Monopoly game, tour, like making fun of baby boomers, we would not hear the end of it. It would not come fly. Out with their little right. tiki torches. And like, <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? Yeah. Please pass go. Please nominate another dictator. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, 
Yeah. Also, the participation trophies, like, we were kids. You fucking gave us the trophy. <laughs> like, yeah. We were babies, like, hey, here's a, like, you fucking gave us those trophies. And now 20 years later, you're like, they got trophies. You fucking did that. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I think I'm obsessed with, like, the fact that he's taking a selfie, too, because, Is I don't know, do, yeah, I think do we still take selfies as much? I feel yeah. like now it's more so, like, people take photos of you, but the ones who are taking the mirror pics, I feel Usually like we take selfies. Parents. Mer yeah, I'm, mirror pics are like a... It's like a little bit behind. I just, yeah. And also, how are you defining millennials? Because a lot of this culture is also like Gen Z. Right. Those are millennials. Yeah. I just think it's a, a joke that's not going to make any money. So yeah. I, I don't get... And, like, and Ali, what Ali said, basically. It's like, it's, I mean, some of stuff's funny. I mean, yeah, I like making fun funny. of... I make fun of people, music vessels, and the people who get all dressed up and take pictures, and it's all about the scene. Yeah, it's funny to make fun of, but... The whole game about it, I don't know if it's worth it. And also, yeah, I mean, let's talk about how the world's on fire, and that wasn't us. So, I mean. Well, and also, I think people liked playing Monopoly because it's kind of an escape. You're like, oh, I can have all this money and own all these mansions and houses and stuff. And like to take a break and kind of have a relatable spin on Monopoly, I'm like, it's not as not, fun. Also, not what Monopoly is about, life. one. Two, I never liked playing Monopoly because I was not good at it. And it's, it's about like, <laughs> Being rich or being poor, and your older brother just rubbing it in your face and you're never winning. That's wow. what it's about. I'm not personal. Real <laughs> it's no. okay because I can you're feel not the poor in real life. So don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. True. I can basically assure you that no millennials are going to play this because I'm sure any of them that are playing Monopoly are still in a 30 year long game. Right. Well, that's the, the baby thing. So with this version. one, that game is long. They and made fun. it shorter, it has less squares, but. and they're like, it's yeah. because of millennials. Also, right. have you ever played like the card them. game, the Monopoly card game? It's it's an entirely different game, and it's so much better. No, I really never really of that. cool. You have to actually be smart to win. <laughs> it has nothing. It's not really about like consumerism. What? I don't know. It's completely different. It's so much better. What is it called? It's just Monopoly the card game. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a completely I've never different heard game. Of that. It's oh. way better. Um, hmm. I won't get into it, is but it just Sims? buy that. <laughs> yeah, it's no, no Sims. Well, kind of um, like real life, but just like <laughs> Sims, making yeah, like money. Sims. No. Sims is a computer game. I know, but like oh. Oh. basically, you know, being smart and building yeah. up your empire and everything. I'm into like, well, <laughs> I liked playing Clue. Yes, I'll buy so that. they can do oh, a millennial I Clue. Clue. I guess you just kill people with cell phones or no, you just send mean <laughs> yeah. tweets. Oh You're so and so cheated on so and so, yeah. and she's a you dirty <laughs> slut. Tweet it out. Yeah. It was killed in the in the coffee shop. Was Whatever. Erica killed you by the drone in yeah. the cafe. The yeah. drone. Yeah, I like that. Millennial clue. Cyber bully them until they kill themselves. <laughs> oh my right. god. Mm -hmm. That's the true darkness. That's the true darkness. <laughs> yeah. I mean. We went there. Hey. Yeah. I like to be real. That's what's happening in America, people. Uh, you know what game fucking rocks? Uno. Do you know oh, Uno? So yeah. It's like Sims. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you okay? Can be Is my everybody okay now? Dude, I love Uno. Uno's so good. I was like, when I was little, Uno was like my vice. Like, yeah. I would just like <laughs> light up on like Capri Sun, fucking play some Uno with my babysitter. Yeah. I was like, yeah, mama. Yeah, Uno's <laughs> so good because like anyone of any age can beat your ass. Like, I right. was an after school teacher and literally so a three and a half year old would beat me constantly, and then he'd be like, I can't wipe my butt, and I'd have to go wipe his butt, and I'd be like so angry about yeah. it, because it's like, this little bitch just beat me, and Uno like, and I'm wiping his butt. And you never felt, never anything yeah. felt more powerful than you were one-on-one, -on -one and you're like, draw two, draw four, skip, skip, oh, reverse, oh, skip, oh, draw oh, two, oh, done, oh, Uno. Yeah. Like, it's just like, that was the best feeling in oh, the world. I haven't yeah. played Uno, Uno in years. years. Oh uh, no, I like I think once. That. Was, like, I, there's there's a machine for one of the versions of Uno and they just like spit the cards at you. I think like, I'm really behind on my board game game. Yeah. Like, yeah. You guys seem you like you still Sims. play everything. <laughs> you're like, you're like Sims. I'm more of a video game. Well you're a Sims <laughs> expert, yeah. we know that. I'm like Rosebud, wait a Rosebud, Rosebud, Rosebud. Are you a Sim? <laughs> <laughs> like what's happening? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I like Cards Against Humanity. That's a new one that I, I oh, like. Yeah, that That's fun. That's a dumb game, yeah. though. I think it's fun. It's not bad. But okay. Cards Against Humanity is just like, oh, Helen Keller, drinking booze. <laughs> That's kind of funny. I'm yeah. sure she liked to drink once in a while. Sims. Um, <laughs> I'm never going to live that down, but you know what I mean. Well, oh. now's our time for our first guest. Uh, Glenn Zipper is an Oscar-winning producer who's teamed up with Netflix for his next big project, Dogs. The six-episode Dog You series 
follows mm. six episodes, six, six <laughs> incredible stories from across the globe and celebrates the deep emotional bonds between people and their beloved four-legged best friends. Let's take a look. You guys are getting ready to start on a journey that very few people ever get to see. My dog Zeus is trapped in Syria. I have to get him here. Sin da piccolo Ice è stato il mio compagno. Ice è il centro della nostra famiglia. Service dogs have been around for decades. So much of it depends on that match between the child and the dog. Cada perro debería de tener su casa. I think we're just scraping the surface of what dogs can really do. Good job! I've been a groomer for 22 years. I put my heart and soul into it. It can be lonely to have the disability. We're hoping he'll be her best friend. I think he's telling us how much he loves us. Senti cosa dice lei. We needed him as much as he needed us. She is my daughter. I love her. I can't imagine my life without dogs. Everyone, please give a warm Bill Bunch welcome to Glenn Zipper. <laughs> Glenn, thank you so much for being here, and thank you so much for making this wonderful series that we cannot wait to watch. But can you tell us a little bit about it and how it came to be? Um, well, uh, my whole story, I'm a, a dedicated documentary producer, and uh, I wasn't always a documentary producer. I actually was a criminal prosecutor right across the river here in uh, Hudson County. And um, I uh, had the fortune, good fortune one day, to come across a stray pit bull puppy on the street, mm -hmm. and, uh, and which then brought me to the animal shelter. And I'd never been in an animal shelter in my life. Um, and I was immediately confronted by floor to ceiling dogs and cats and, and other homeless animals. And uh, the plight that they were facing was something that I had never considered before. And I think it was in a matter of weeks I had turned in my badge and I'd started volunteering at the animal shelter. And something funny happened in that in that year working at the animal shelter, was I was actually happy for the first time in my adult life. And I said, well, I really want to feel this way for the rest of my life. And what I'd always wanted to do was be a storyteller. So um, that chance encounter with that dog, which became my dog named Anthony, um, uh, changed my entire path. And we, we got in my truck, and we drove from New Jersey to Los Angeles. And wow. I didn't, didn't know anyone. And then you know, we, we went down that path for the last 15 years, and eventually we found some success. Um, and uh, at some point, um, I got a job. Someone offered me a job working as a documentary producer, and um, I learned the ropes, and a uh, film came in one day that he didn't want to make, my boss, so I said, well, I'm going to make this one myself, and I'm going to hire you to produce it with me, and that film won the Oscar for Best Documentary. Wow. Um, what an you. incredible story. And then, um, awesome. but when everyone went out partying all night, which is what you're supposed to do after you win an Oscar, I went home to walk Anthony. <laughs> so, um, but it was, uh, this is really full circle now, right. um, you know, telling the story of dogs, and more specifically, the bond between human beings and dogs, and that's something that all of us, I think, share, right. particularly in these divisive times where there's not a lot that people across America can agree, agree on. Um, and so we were just talking, um, you know, if you're having your Thanksgiving dinner and you're arguing over politics, maybe just stop and watch Netflix right. and watch, watch these stories. And I think everybody can agree on that. Yeah. And beyond um, unifying nationally, this series cover, goes across the globe to Japan, Syria, Costa Rica, Italy, and the US, of course. Mm -hmm. So how difficult it was to find these stories to tell and then actually ex execute the filming and the, the whole process? It was challenging, but we had a, a, a really strong team of, of story casting agents. Those actually exist. People go out and, and find documentary stories. Uh, and uh, Francine Daw and Matt Shelley. And uh, they came back with, I think we, we worked really hard to boil them down. And when they were done boiling them down, we still had 40. 
Right. Um, and then we said, well, okay, well, let's, let's figure out a device to winter this down even further. And we said, well, let's first and foremost concentrate on the bond. If it's just a dog doing something you know, cute or funny or endearing, that's not enough. There has to be a strong bond between dogs and human beings. And so when we did that, that winter, that winter it down a bit. And then we said, well, another criteria we need to have is diversity, geographic diversity to make the point that this, this bond knows no borders, this love knows no borders, and then diversity of characters. We wanted characters that looked different from one another, that had different types of families, that went about life in different ways. And once we used all those different overlays, we're about, I think we were about down to nine, and then we picked the best six out of those nine. Wow. Wow. Were you dealing specifically just with the owners, or did these dogs have like agents? Because I know there are famous <laughs> no. dogs now. No, we're, these aren't. So these aren't like um, show dogs. Mm -hmm. These are real dogs that you know e everyday people have, um, and a lot of them weren't accustomed to having cameras in their life. But they trusted us and our filmmakers. And we had a really amazing team of, of documentary filmmakers, a dream team of documentary right. filmmakers working. It's like everyone who directed an episode has either won an Oscar been nominated for an Oscar or won an Emmy. Wow. And wow. so these filmmakers are really good just disappearing into the scenery and they're in a very small footprint. And so after a while, our characters forgot they were there and they just behaved as they normally would and would go about their lives. That's right. awesome. What made you choose Netflix for this documentary and what do you think the benefits were? And they made me an offer I couldn't refuse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, they, I mean, I think Netflix, you know, all things meet equal. It's where you want to be. They, you know, they push a button and you're in, I think, something like 90 countries across the world and millions and millions of 100 people. 100 million people. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, again, we wanted to reach as many people as we could with these stories, so they were the perfect company. There's a lot of good distributors out there, but Netflix is the cream of the crop. Yeah. And you're also working on a documentary is now about Johnny Cash, mm -hmm. Muhammad Ali. Mm -hmm. Tell us about those other projects. You're well, uh, Johnny Cash is uh, being directed by Tom Zimney, who also directed the um, Elvis documentary for HBO last year, which is actually two films, part one and part two. Producing that with Frank Marshall. Um, we're just finishing that now. We'll see you know, what the path holds for that. Uh, Muhammad Ali is also two films, uh, part one and part two, directed by Antoine Fuqua, who you guys know from Training Day. Um, and, and a lot of other amazing films. And what's really interesting about the Muhammad Ali film is when I would tell people I was working on it, people would congratulate me and be very polite, but I knew when I'd walk out of the room, they'd go like, why is someone else making another Muhammad Ali documentary? <laughs> and we knew that we needed to have a good answer for that question, and the answer was, we're gonna tell the story entirely from Muhammad Ali's perspective. Mm. So there's not a single interview in the entire film. The whole story is told through Muhammad Ali's words and with his voice. Wow, wow. that is very incredible. Interesting. And it was also produced with LeBron James. Oh, God. Guys, that guy does a lot. Yeah. He's <laughs> I hear he's good at basketball, too. Pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> Pretty good. Oh, um, and back to dogs. I was, really, I was reading the press release of it. Which I think it's so interesting that, yes, it's about the dogs, but it's also really about the owners. Mm -hmm. So for people who aren't crazy animal lovers or don't love mm -hmm. dogs, I don't know what Whoa. psychopaths out there who you are. But I think you could watch this mm -hmm. the series and be like, it's, it's about like human, 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 humanity and stories. and mm -hmm. right. Absolutely. I mean... I think the, the key ingredients, whether it's a documentary or a scripted film, are characters that you're invested in who go on a journey with stakes, and then those stakes are paid off. And every one of our stories does that in different ways. And that's why I think even if you're not a huge dog lover, you can watch these stories and really enjoy them. And can, is there, can you preview a bit of the, what the stories that you follow are? No. I'm okay. just kidding. No, no, no. Cool. The, well, um, <laughs> we're done. The, um, well, episode one is about a young lady who has a very rare form of epilepsy where she has um, seizures potentially every few minutes. And she's also, also at risk of having grand mal seizures that can stop her breathing. So her parents are um, basically held hostage by her condition. They always have to be with her. They go to school with her. They sleep on the floor of her bedroom. Wow. And they bring a dog into the, into the girl's life to not only be her friend, but also warn them when these seizures are going to come so they have a partner in taking care of her. Right. And it completely changes their life. Um, episode two, we have a, a young man from Syria right. who uh, was drafted into the army. And he, of course, doesn't want to go into the army because he's very likely to get killed. So he has to escape, uh, ultimately, to Germany. But he can't bring his dog with him. And it's oh. the story of trying to reunite him with that dog. And I'm not going to tell you <laughs> what happens. And hopefully it all turns out OK. Um, episode three is um, a story that takes place in Lake Como, Italy, um, which is uh, a, a beautiful village. I think that George Clooney has made famous. Yes, uh, yes. He's, he's not in the episode, sadly. <laughs> but maybe if we have a season two, we'll invite him. Um, and uh, it's a family that runs a family-owned restaurant, and the, the patriarch of the family is a fisherman, and the dog is his partner. And it's a story about how this dog is part of that family and also 
how he's a working dog and a fisherman himself. Wow. <laughs> um, episode four is um, called Scissors Down, um, which about, it's just about the really high-end um, competitive grooming world. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, and, uh, and Kenichi, our main character, it, he actually makes art from dog grooming. And, it's absolutely, and he comes to America to be in an American dog competition in Pasadena. And they just don't get him or his art. But it's absolutely stunning what he does. Episode five uh, was directed by Dan. I should say who directed all the episodes. Heidi Ewing directed the first episode, Academy Award nominee. Episode two, Amy Berg, my partner on the series. Um, she's an Academy Award nominee. Episode three, um, Richard Hankin, who worked on The Jinx. And he's an Emmy Award winner. Mm -hmm. uh, episode four is Roger Ross Williams from Life Animated, Academy Award winner. And that episode, we talked about dog grooming. Episode five, Dan Lindsay and TJ Martin, Academy Award winners. All these Academy yes. Awards. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and and the, those are the filmmakers that we made Undefeated with. And that's the film that we had won the Oscar on together. Um, and uh, that episode takes place in Costa Rica, Territorio de Zaguates, 1,200 dogs just running free. Wow. Um, but it's not, wow. if you look at it from a distance, it seems like a paradise, but there's actually a lot of challenges that right. need to be surmounted. And there's a lot of debate as to whether or not the territory is a good thing or a bad thing. I think by the end of the episode, a lot of people are going to come down the side of it being a really good thing, but it's not that simple. And then the last episode, also directed by Amy Berg, is called Second Chances, uh, which involves a rescue organization based out of New York called Hearts and Bones. Um, and they go down to the south to rescue dogs that would otherwise be euthanized in, in the shelters down south and bring them to New York. And sometimes you meet people in New York and they're like, why would I have a dog in New York? It's a terrible place to have a dog. Well, it's actually the best place to have a dog. And the episode makes that case. Wow. wow. Interesting. Yeah. Like you said, a really diverse range of stories. I'm really excited to watch this. Glenn, thank you so much thank for you. being here. Really. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Don't forget, you can stream the new six-part docuseries, Dogs, today on Netflix. Thank, thank you. you. The trailer for the live-action Dumbo remake is here, and it does not disappoint. Disney uses visual effects to bring a new Dumbo to life, leaving us nostalgic for more. The film is directed by Tim Burton, who is best known for his work on The Nightmare Before Christmas and Alice in Wonderland. Let's take a look at the trailer for the new film. You have something very rare. You have wonder. We can soar on that elephant's wings. What's happening? Where are they taking her? Take Dumbo back inside. But she's his mom. Do something. She needs us. Look at me. We're going to bring your mama home. He doesn't look like magic to me. need you to believe in them. Come on! You can do it, Dumbo. Show them. Fly, Dumbo. Fly. Baby of I've seen that trailer three times and I still get goosebumps. Like I'm Wait, like, and, uh, yeah, like I'm like chills. Just chills. hearing that song, between that and Dogs, I'm like, I am done. Yeah, no, I, I'm, you know, these Disney's live action remakes are, I mean, of course they're doing them and it's a way to just keep remaking these successful properties, but um, I, I've liked most of them. I really, I like Cinderella. Beauty and the Beast I thought was good, but I really just thought it was literally what the cartoon version was. Like it wasn't anything new to it. Excited for Mulan and Lion King. But this one, I'm like, I didn't love the Dumbo cartoon. Like it wasn't my favorite. It wasn't one of the Disney movies I kept repeatedly watching. Mm -hmm. So this one I'm really excited for because like I'm not as attached to the animated film. So I'm really looking forward to this. Yeah, I can't wait. I actually really uh, liked the Dumbo, the, the original Dumbo, but I watched when I was three and a half for the first time, and I literally remember it was the first time I ever experienced depression. I think wow. it's such a sad, Aww. sad story. And I, I think it's, there's something about like him losing his mom, and uh, then he's in the circus, and the circus is the circus. And he's oh, made fun of yeah. constantly. Yeah. Yeah. 
Watch, looking at him with that makeup on his face literally makes me want to cry. Right. Yeah. The elephant has like the Joker smile. It's so <laughs> sad. It's Why so, so sad. serious, Dumbo? <laughs> I'm also excited because it seems like there are more like human stories. I think that's yeah. the thing with uh, remaking all of the Disney animated classics is it has to be different and provide you with like a new perspective and something else that you wouldn't get from just watching the animated version. Right. I totally agree, and that's why I think what Beauty and the Beast didn't do, but Cinderella did do. Cinderella, you got Kate Blanchett as a stepmother, and you got a better understanding of like her motivations and not just some why she's kind of evil. I didn't. Did anyone see that? Yeah, I mean, I mean probably made like oh over two hundred million dollars. I mean, made something, but it wasn't as famous. Beauty and the Beast did really well. Yeah, I didn't see it. And um, the Lion King with Beyonce's in it, so I've been the one in the world. I'm I think has to see one. it. We're yeah. legally, we legally that's have to go see deal. it. Yeah, I think Beyonce's in it, so um, that's gonna be insane. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really excited that Danny DeVito is in this Danny. too. <laughs> Did you guys see that story that went viral about uh, SUNY Purchase? They had a secret Danny DeVito shrine yeah. in this bathroom. Yeah. They closed it up. Why? Oh my God. Because I guess it was a dangerous little zone. Did you see it? It was like no. in a bathroom under behind like where you get the napkins from, yeah. that little metal thing. You pull it open and you would walk into this little dungeon zone and there was like candles <gasps> and like cut out the Danny DeVito. It was like a so cool. Yeah. In the bathroom. Just a really creepy one. He's awesome yeah. and real. Smells. He's really nice. When I when I, I worked at a production company, and they were doing a show with him. And he would walk through the office, yeah, and I was very nice. and I would always I would always want to shout, Danny DeVito, I love your work. But <laughs> mean girls, <laughs> mean girls, but I know, because I had to be professional. That's good. <laughs> that. Yeah, it was I good. Was. I would have gotten fired. Yeah, but Colin Farrell, Michael Keaton's in this as well. It's a pretty big cast of like movie stars that they got. Oh, to even do this. the little girl, uh, that's Tandy Newton's daughter. Yeah. I'm excited to see how she oh. does on screen. Yeah. She has a really love ethereal Newton. look. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I'm excited. Well, guys. Now it's time for our <laughs> next guest. Sammy Main is an author and editor who's an expert at reading tarot cards, so much so that she even wrote a book on the topic titled How to Deal Tarot for Everyday Life, a relatable guide for those curious about the world of tarot. Everyone, please give a warm build brunch welcome to Sammy Main. <laughs> nice to meet you. I'm nice Lucas. Nice to meet you. Hey, how you doing? Hi, Hi Asia. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you. Wow, right. thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. We're Hi, guys. excited, or if you're maybe scared. I right. Yeah. Should we be scared? Definitely not. Tell us what <laughs> is tarot. What is tarot? Great. Yeah. I mean, first of all, don't be scared. We're out of the Halloween season, mm -hmm. everybody. Like, there's no more scares to be had. Okay, right. good. It's only scary that one week a year, and now we're done. Yes. Uh, so tarot started a long, long time ago. Uh, it is from Italy in, like, the 1400s. Mm -hmm. uh, and it started as just, like, a normal deck of playing cards. Uh, there's four suits, so it's kind of like the playing cards we use mm -hmm. today. Uh, and then eventually, over time, it started to be used in divination and somewhat fortune telling. The way I see tarot is that it's kind of like a, a spiritual forecast, kind of for like what's going on in your neck of the woods. <laughs> Just for very right there. <laughs> exactly. He's a tarot card reader. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> Who knew? Yeah. Very. He's very into like crystals. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> So yeah, it's just uh, the way I see it. It's like a, a gentle look at kind of like where things are at for you right now and maybe where things could be going if they stick to what they're doing right now. Okay, I like that, cool. a gentle look. Yes, exactly. I like that. It's cool. Look, I'm not scary. The book yeah. is beautiful, yeah, very so aesthetic <laughs> book. It's yeah. so, so pretty. Please, yeah, yeah, yeah. It up. yeah. It's yeah, such that a is nice really book. Cute. I Isn't love it the cute? colors and everything about and it. Cartoons. I want to yeah, live in it. It's so pretty. What inspired you to make this book? Because it's like candy for the eyes. I love it so much. <laughs> Isn't it so nice? Um, um, so the inspiration for the book came when I lost a job. Uh, and you know when you're unemployed and you're like, the only thing I can do every day is shower. That's <laughs> your only regular activity <laughs> for a while that you can rely on. Uh, so one day in the shower, I came up with the idea to do a book, kind of like Tarot for 20-somethings um, was the original idea. And I texted one of my friends who had written a book before, and so she knew more than I did kind of what to do. And she was like, I'm very busy. No, but she had a, a literary agent who had an editor who had been looking for something like that. Um, so we kind of like fell backwards into it. Um, and the team at HarperCollins was really great. We were able to find uh, this beautiful artist, Marissa de la Pena. I've never met the artist of this book. She wow. lives in Los Angeles and she 
uh, was selling this tarot deck on Kickstarter. So like it wasn't even available anywhere, but we really love the art. It's like super poppy and like really bright and very cool. I don't know, I really like it. Very soothing colors. Right? Yeah. It's very calm. There's like nice it. gradients. Yeah. yeah. It makes tarot so not scary. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Why do we think tarot is scary? Well, let's find out when one of us draws the death card. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to do, a, a, I think, a short reading on each of us. Great. So should we start with, should we go work our way? Go this way? Yeah. Does yeah. anybody do feel brave enough to go first? Go first. You go yeah. first? Yeah, okay, great. Um, so the deck I'm going to be using today is called the Morgan Greer Tarot deck. Uh, oh. And this box itself is like also from the 70s. So it's like super oh, retro and very vintage. funky. There's like lots of long hair and mustaches. Mm -hmm. I wonder if I can just show you one that's like extra uh, funkalicious. I don't know, like the artwork is like very oh, retro and very cool. cool. Ooh, I just saw the death card. Woo it's in there, folks. <laughs> there are some cards. You may not, not like to get. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they don't, they're not all, is yeah. there ever a card that's like, oh, I'm in the deep shit now? Yeah. Like, they're the deep no, like, shit real card. bad yeah, no. cards, yeah. right? Like, no, I mean, like, it is in how you interpret them. Right. Great. So there are some tarot readers, I'm sure, who would be like, listen, I have bad news <laughs> for you. You're hopeless. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, but that's not always, it's just in how you interpret it. And the way I do it, I don't deal in reverse right. cards. So like that would be double the meaning of 78 cards, which is already enough for my tiny little brain. Huh. Uh, so, uh, so like none of the like worst of anything will come out. So yeah. what I like to do, is there anything that's on your mind? I think I'm doing what, like a one card reading for everybody, yeah. seeing mm. what we have time for. Yeah. So it's just gonna be one card, no biggie, but is there any, topic of your life that you're curious to learn more about. Could be <laughs> career, could be love life, could be family, could be, <laughs> you know, anything that you're curious about or you just want like a daily reading. Uh, Why are you so scared? Because <laughs> he has stuff going on. Uh, Tell me everything. Uh, <laughs> let's do, um, Let's get into it. I'm love, not Let's do love life. Let's figure it out. Let's do love life. He chose love life. Oh, he chose love. <laughs> That's already a great first step. Mm-hmm. Let's see about that. <laughs> so what I'm doing now is I'm uh, I'm shuffling to kind of put my vibes into it. In a minute, I'm going to have you divide the deck into three piles. Normally, if I would be doing a bigger reading, I would take one of those piles, but we'll be just taking the top card mm -hmm. from one of those piles. Uh, let's see. Lucas, love life. Okay. It's anticipation. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and cut it into three stacks, and then you tell me which stack to pull the card from. That one? Okay. You've made your choice. In the middle. In the middle one. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Sorry, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have a puke bag? Yeah. <laughs> we have a, a splash stone? Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh my God, you're fine. Okay. So your card, I'll show you right <laughs> Woo! Sigh of relief, shake it off. Uh, this is the Queen of Swords. So, first like of all, her. just like really cool, powerful imagery. Loving her already, loving her vibe. Um, so Queen of Swords, I'm actually gonna use my book. Like I said, 78 cards. I have a life and I can't memorize <laughs> all of them. It's totally fine if you like wanna practice tarot and you need your guidebook with you. Mm -hmm. um, so in this book, uh, they're called Knives. So sometimes uh, swords and knives are very similar. Um, this is one of the suits, yeah, keep it up if you would like. Oh, sure. uh, this is one of the suits of tarot and swords tend to relate to uh, mental truth or clarity and kind of your like mental powers and sometimes that means you're too observant, sometimes it means you like need to be more open and honest about stuff. So the Queen of Swords is a court card and those tend to relate to people in our lives. Usually if it's a queen, it could be someone with a more feminine energy than anything else. Um, cool. So this person tends to be a good listener um, it's kind of someone who is very perceptive, but doesn't necessarily use that against you, but they could if they needed to. Uh, it's someone who's like in control of their truth and their honesty, but is still, you know, looking out for you in general. Mm -hmm. Does this kind of make sense if there's someone in relation to your love life who either this is <laughs> someone you're interested in, is it someone you go to for advice? <laughs> no comment, convenient donut mug, you can hide from Tara. Yeah, I think sounds good. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. Does it check out? Yes, it does. You can absolutely tell does. me if it's complete No, bullshit. it absolutely I'll take does. It, it absolutely yeah? does. Yep. Okay, great. So not so Thank bad. you. Not so bad. Look at that, guys. Oh, wow. You did it, right? I'm sweating. <laughs> I think my yeah. shirt. <laughs> so, Sammy, how long have you been doing this? 
Um, How did you oh kind of gosh. start your journey into tarot cards? This would have been, I must have started learning in about 2015 um, and just kind of doing it off and on for friends, for complete strangers on the internet, which is always fun because then I feel like sometimes if you go to a tarot reader, you're like, they're just going to tell me everything I want to hear. They're going to be like, oh, something's going on with you. Like, they're going to lean into it a little too hard. So I like doing it for strangers sometimes because it takes away some of that, like, you're getting me. <laughs> like, it's, it's not <laughs> a grift. Yeah, no. yeah. Huh. Um, so yeah, since about 2015 or so. Huh. Okay, my turn. Yeah. yeah. Okay, what's up? Is there a topic you want to learn more about? Um, is something on your mind? Or let's you want do general? career. I hate my job. Great. <laughs> <laughs> You're in the right place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I love it. I love it. <laughs> I feel like you guys were talking about millennial monopoly earlier. Yeah. We so I feel like mm -hmm. one of those spaces has to be like unemployment. Right. <laughs> one of them has to be like <laughs> yeah, yeah. laid off from a media job. <laughs> like, that's got to be on there. The startup folded. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go to jail, I guess, yeah. <laughs> Add more debt. <laughs> um, okay, so I've done my shuffling. We're gonna see what we can learn a little bit more about your career. Same deal, three piles, please, and then you tell me which one to draw from. Let's draw from here. Okay. Oh <laughs> <laughs> You're still scared. <laughs> yes, I like, It's not even about you anymore. <laughs> okay. Okay, Knight of Rods. Rods can also be wands. So there's four suits in tarot. We've seen knives and swords. Now we have rods and wands. Uh, these tend to relate to inspiration. This is a great career-related card. It also has to do with um, kind of your creative energy and where you're putting that focus toward. Um, so Knight of Rods is another court card. So it could relate to another person in your life. It could be a part of your personality also. Um, I love wands. I'm more of a cups girl when it comes to tarot suits, but wands are also very close to me. Um, so let's see what Knight of Wands is all about. Yay. So this is a, a card all about someone, right? It's fun. It's good. Um, <laughs> this is a card all about someone who's very confident. It's someone who knows what direction they're heading in. Um, so the knight isn't quite the king. So in court cards, it's page, knight, queen, king. So we saw the queen, someone who is in control and kind of knows what to do. The knight is not quite at that like next peak step, but it's someone who is confident in their direction and has used their experience to get there. So this is a card related to your career. I really enjoy it for you because it's kind of, you know, they're not afraid to start something new based on what they already know, but they're already confident in the direction that they're going. So is this supposed to be me or someone in my life? What do you think? I ha I don't know. I feel like it's you. Okay. I feel like you exude confidence. Thank you. You know what you're doing. Thank, thank yeah. you. Come back anytime. <laughs> <laughs> Tarot's not so bad. <laughs> okay, Shannon? Shannon's Yay. up. Shannon. Hey. Should I do love or career? What are you going to do? Uh, it's either love or career. No, it can There's be nothing anything. else that It could be general. Family, we anything. only care about love or yeah, career. That's it. Um, I want to do career. Where do you want to eat the dinner okay, tonight? Whatever career, you want. I'll do love. So we have two loves and two careers. Right, I'll do love. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Hot God. Oh my God, I can't wait. It's going to be like the, the blank card. <laughs> but you're like, this is weird. We didn't even know we had these. <laughs> you can't match. Yeah. If just all the cards were like, yikes, I don't know what to tell. <laughs> just blank. Oh, come on. Like, ah! Whoopsie daisy. Also, just like, this isn't it, but like, look at how fun these cards oh, are. I love that. Great yeah. illustrations. Just shout out to the 70s for having really cool tarot cards. It was a good time to be a tarot reader. Okay, so love life. <laughs> anything in particular? You're just doing it because you feel like you have to ask about your love life. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything you want to know or anything? Ooh, I mean, like, how specific can I get? Like, I just want to know, like, you know, where's it going? <laughs> Come on. Am I right? That's yeah. going to be on Millennial Monopoly also, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, is it happening? <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know. I like somebody. Yeah. Cool. I want to know what's yeah. going to happen. What's the deal? Do they like me? Relatable. <laughs> Very relatable question. No, they probably like me. They, we made out. Oh. Um, well, I mean, that's a great sign. What do yeah, you need me right? for? <laughs> I know. I don't know why. Let's Very good. Let's go here. OK. You take a deep breath every time. I'm I know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yay! Oh, I love this the card. The fool, that's me! The fool. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, what does it mean? 
mean? Just enough of like a dig. Wait, that you want dumbass? Yeah. <laughs> Get That's with the professional. It. <laughs> I was uh, putting her bad vibes on my car. <laughs> I'll, have to, I'll, I'll sage them when I get home. <laughs> um, so the fool, uh, the fool is really special. So this is the first card we've seen uh, that isn't a part of the four suits. Um, so there are four suits, and we call those the minor arcana. This card is part of the major arcana. So this tends to deal in more life milestones and kind of bigger deal aspects of your life. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Special time. Great. Um, it's still called the fool, though. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, like, this is a big moment in my life where I'm going to be a dumbass. <laughs> but if we look at the card, the fool's all about spontaneity and kind of going with the flow and not being afraid to start something new. It's the first card of the Major Arcana, so its number is zero. So it's kind of at the start of something new where you're not jaded yet and you're still like off on an adventure and you don't know what's coming, but you're still on the road. It's kind of like that spirit. Like, Got it. Uh, I don't know, in like you know, the first few minutes of Lord of the Rings where they're like yeah. fireworks and parties and it's all fine. You so know? you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> yes. Hell yeah. I think as long this card, I think for in terms of love life, I think it's be open and be ready for something. Got it. And it, it could be whatever. It, who knows? It's like, be ready. He might knife you. He might text you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Those are the two options. Two options. <laughs> <laughs> okay, final one. Time. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Your uh, career. Career. Yeah. Okay. Anything in particular? Just no, career? No, just career. Okay. Do I need to, like, touch the deck or something? When it's your time to... To it's like pulling it. Yeah. I'm like trying to put yeah. my vibes on it. Yeah. I mean, go for it if you want. I just gotta okay. put mine on there first. It's like, you know, how cats and dogs are like, yeah. they claim their territory. Mm. Like, you just gotta, you know, pee on it. Get up. Yeah. <laughs> so you pee on these cards daily? <laughs> no. Frequently. I thought they had a good funk to them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not just from the water. 70s. It's yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> That's why that card's blank. I've just <laughs> pissed off all the design. <laughs> Okay, what a fun time for everybody. Okay, uh, three piles, please, and then you tell me which one. I'm not really great at splitting. Neither am I. Um, I'm going to go with the middle. Okay. Thank you. I know, I feel like we need mystic music. Oh, that would be fun. Like smoke and candles. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. So this is the sun. Oh. This what is another, uh, another, I'll get to it. This is uh, another card of the major arcana. So it's not one of the four suits. Mm -hmm. uh, the sun is really special to me because it's almost at the end of the tarot deck. And it's kind of, um, it's wanting you to go toward where you feel that warm, fuzzy feeling. Like the mm. sun is what no longer, uh, gives us life. It's what makes things grow. It's where you feel kind of like most you and most natural and most at home. It's kind of like where you flourish and like where you feel best. So if the sun card is coming up for a career reading, I would say, you know, go toward where you feel warm, where you feel happy, where you feel most at home Find your and passion. Exactly. Find I love your it. Sun. Love that. Yeah. Sammy, yeah. You, this is so great. Thank right? you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You can pick up a copy of How to Deal Tarot for Everyday Life wherever books are sold. And you can learn more about Sammy at www.sammymain.com. We'll see you all on Monday, same time, same table. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sammy. Thank you. Thank you.